hey guys what's up so i hope you have watched the dna tutorials before you go on to watch this tutorial on genetics introduction so this is genetics 1.1 and uh, we will deal with basics of inheritance uh, this is presented by me dr roman seni and this is the youtube channel an academy medical so if you have any doubt or any query uh, you can ask me on the facebook page i am just trying to impart high quality accessible education and if you want to know more you can read online please please spread the word of this education revolution do hit thumbs up do hit the like button if you want me to keep making this video so i know it is helping you at least this is the facebook page that is facebook.com slash unacademy medical now i'll tell you what is genetics first okay it is a basically a branch of biology okay it is a biological branch that's why we study it in biology and it deals with two things it deals with inheritance and it also deals with variation it is term which is given by batson and the father of genetics is gregor john mendel or johan mendel see what do you mean by inheritance inheritance is let's say you are tall because your parents were tall or you are intelligent because your parents are intelligent or you are fair skinned because your parents were fair skinned so some of the parents gene have come to you via inheritance while variation is also there right you are not exactly as tall as your average of mother and father you are not exactly the same skin colored as average of your mother and father some variation has occur so the variation is basically either you are tall or short or your color is different slightly this is called as variation of character and this goes from parents to offspring is that understood the branch of biology dealing with inheritance as well as the variation of characters from parents to offspring is genetics so genetics deals with genes it deals with inheritance it deals with variations it deals with transmission etc etc inheritance as i have already told you is a process by which characters are passed from parents to progeny progeny and offspring are one and the same thing uh, please don't get confused and this is the basis of entire heredity heredity means the study of transmission of characteristics the study of how the uh, let's say hereditary diseases progress from parents to or hereditary characters progress from parents to offsprings okay heredity now variation is the degree by which progeny differ from their parents okay so for example let's say your father is 5 feet 10 inches tall your mother is 5 feet 6 inches tall so you may even be 6 foot tall or you may be even 5 feet 4 inches tall you may be 6.6 feet tall or you may be even 5 feet tall anywhere between 5 feet to 6.6 you can be there right so there is some degree by which the progeny is different from their parents this is called as variations in the expression of genes so this is what we study in genetics now variations can be two types okay some are related to your body cells which are not transmitted for example for example if your father builds your muscles in gym okay and he becomes very bulky on the other hand your mother becomes very very obese so you will be born as a normal kid except if she has diabetes and all in that case there will be some complications but just forget about it your father has muscles he has built in gym but the variations are occurring only in the somatic cell that is his muscles cells the genes remain the same okay more or less these are non inheritable variation his muscles will not automatically come to you or let's say your father is sachin tendulkar and he is the best cricketer of entire world but it does not mean that his son will automatically becomes a cricketer he also has to practice the same thing again and again for years and years similarly hair length of human being or let's say your father is a guitarist so these characters are the change in body cells soma means body okay so these are not transmitted from parents to offspring so please remember somatic variations are non inheritable variation on the other hand blastogenic variation or germinal variation so for example if your parents are tall so the odds are that you will also be tall so if your parents are intelligent you will also be intelligent the odds are in favor of you there are some exceptions if their parents are dark skinned you cannot be like cinderella you cannot be a white skinned person so i hope it is clear now these are the germinal variation these are the variations in genes which will vary your dna which will vary your proteins which will vary the everything which you see and these are inheritable they will be transmitted from parents to offsprings and they occur at germ plasm level okay they occur at germ level is that understood and they are the changes in reproductive body part so if there is change in gametes obviously you will be affected but if there is just change in soma you will not be affected so this was something related to variation now again when it comes to blastogenic variation they can be of two types okay either it can be a continuous variation 
it means it is due to crossing over of chromosomes i'll tell you in meiosis how does it affect when two chromosome comes together they cross over certain parts this is also called as genetic recombination we will deal when we will deal with meiosis okay but uh, there is also something called as discontinuous variation this is sudden jumps okay sudden jumps in your genes uh, in the reproductive cells due to environmental fluctuations for example if your mother is exposed to x ray while you are a child or uv rays while you are uh, inside the womb okay still in the womb if you are exposed by x ray or uv rays then you can have mutations or saltations see what where have you heard about saltatory conduction okay saltatory conduction is seen in case of nerves where there is myelin sheath so for example if this is a nerve okay and this is covered by myelin and these are breaks in myelin so the nerve impulse tend to jump from these myelin gaps this is called a saltatory conduction so just remember if there is sudden jump then it is saltation or also called as mutation there are two types see polydactyly means there is more than five fingers okay so it is obviously a change in quantity it is obviously a meristic variation meristic means when you can count something when it is countable for example change in the number of fingers etc but substantive means change in the quality so polydactyly on the face of it looks like it is meristic variation but it is also change in quality because there is differentiation will become different functions will become different okay is that understood so i hope you know this now okay so uh, polydactyly is obviously a meristic variation but it is also a substantive variation substantive means quality while meristic means quantity now we move forward to types of genetics so basically one is the classical genetics also called as transmission genetics because it deals with transmission of characters from parents to offsprings this is the fundamental study of genetics and involves transfer of characters this was the one which was propounded by mendel 150 years ago okay roughly we are today 2015 he started in 1858 or something like that so it is more than 150 years now forward genetics is basically let's say you go to a rose plant and the flower is very beautiful and it is red in color okay so let's assume this is a rose plant i know my drawing is very bad so you isolate the protein which is responsible for its color now using the protein you find out which mrna is responsible for this protein coding and finally you know which dna has made this mrna so if you go by this particular sequence now you can have isolated the dna and you can make as many of these red roses as you want this is called as forward genetics you go forward you first see the phenotype then you go to protein then you find the rna and then you find the dna this is the forward genetics but there is something called as backward genetics also or reverse genetics okay so for example from dna that is deoxyribonucleic acid you go to rna that is ribonucleic uh, acid and then to protein then to phenotype this is exact reverse of what we had done in forward genetics population genetics study population as the unit of study okay so in this you study let's say entire population is intelligent or not so this is a particular character of the population and it can be either dominated by intelligence or recessive by dumbness or whatever you want to call it so study of distribution of a particular gene it may be related to height or it may be related to color it may be related to size it may be related to weight it may be related to intelligence anything at all with respect to its dominant and recessive traits this is called as population genetics where unit of study is not an individual but population molecular genetics on the other hand is study of genetics at molecular level this deals with dna rna protein uh, translation apparatus etc these are all structural genetics it's again of three types structural functional and applied functional means what protein will be coded by dna that is what protein will come out of rna or dna what translation result will it see these are functional while applied means let's say if there is a deletion mutation i know you don't know about it but let's assume you know and it leads to let's say any diseases for example if there is defect in hemoglobin it may lead to sickle cell anemia this is the applied part where you know that a change in the slight change in the molecule will lead to drastic changes in phenotype so this was molecular genetics now we deal with blending inheritance so before mendel came there were certain theories and ideas 
Just remember them in passing. Nobody is going to ask describe moist vapor theory by Pythagoras. They may ask you to match the following. Moist vapor theory was given by Pythagoras about very long time ago. Reproductive blood theory again by Aristotle about 2.5 thousand years ago. Then homunculus or pre-formation theory was given by Sommer Dam. What he said that inside every cell or gamete there is a small homunculus something like this. It looks like us but it is small in size. It is something like this. Okay. So yeah, it was a wrong theory, but I'm just trying to make it like that. Anyway, I'm bad with drawing, but the, he said that this is as the representation of small cell and this will be become a larger human being as the time passes by. So just to describe this one, but this is absolutely crap. Zygote forms from scratch. There is no homunculus inside us. Theory of pangenesis is famous because it is given by Darwin. And finally, we have Weizmann's theory. So if you just remember that these theories are related with pre-Mendelian era, then it is more than sufficient. Now, blending means that uh, chromosomes come together and they, the genes come together and they blend. But there are certain exceptions also. For example, the phenomenon of atavism. Um, I don't know if you know about this or not. But so these are the characters which are expressed in an offspring. Okay but they are not present in the parents they are not present in the parents okay so where do they come from they are basically ancestral characteristics these are also called as atavistic characteristics for example if a human baby has a tail it means parents usually don't have tails in human beings but millions of years ago we did have tails so that means the tail has come from an ancestor it is an expression of ancestral characters so i hope it is clear now to you that this is called as atavism. Now evidences in favor of blending are also there for example especially in case of pea plant. So let's say the color of pod domination is let's say purple is the dominant color while small p is for green okay. So let's say if it is p and p it means it will be purple right and if it is p and let's say p then again it will be purple but if it's let's say p and p then it will be green is that understood? It will not be mixture of purple and green in this particular case. It will not be a mixture. It will be pure purple. But in case of Mirabilis jalapa, what happens is, let's say a red color flower is there. So this is represented by R and R. And let's say a white color flower is there. It is represented by WW. But, but when these traits come together, this results in the formation of R and W. But this is not pure red color. This is basically a pink color flower. Is that absolutely understood? So this is incomplete domination because red color is not able to dominate white color. Is that understood? And it results in the production of pink. Finally, we have polygenic inheritance. So for example, till now, you know, only two genes are responsible for a character. No, you may be five genes, seven genes, 10 genes. You don't know how. So for example, skin color, human intelligence, human height, this sometimes exhibit blending also. Okay. So they are controlled by many, many number of genes. So let's assume your father was five feet, 10 inches and your mother is five feet, four inches. So it does not mean you will come only in between. You may be less than five feet, four inches and you may be more than five feet, 10 inches in height. Okay. So it means that it is polygenic inheritance and there will be some blending also. So I will continue this when I deal with polygenic inheritance and incomplete dominance. Now some basic terminology which will help you in understanding genetics. First is the character. Okay. Character is basically expressible form of any phenotype. For example, height is a character. Height is a character which is expressible form of a particular gene. You can see height. Okay. Now height can be only tall, then it is not a contrasting character. But if there are two possibilities, for example, tall and dwarf. Okay. Then it is character having more than one variant. Okay. So all characters obviously will not be contrasting characters only if you have more than one variant for example in case of height or let's say only red flowers are possible then although red color is a characteristic but it is not contrasting character. What is trait? For example height is a character so tallness is one trait spot, uh, shortness is again another one trait. So these are the detectable variant of a character traits are nothing but variants of a character which can be detected. Now gene is the fundamental unit of genetics. Genetics as you can see genetics is tikahua on gene. Genetics is tikahua on gene. Just remember it like that. It is a fundamental unit. Mendel call it factor but you don't call it factor anymore. This is the unit of inheritance. 
and it is made up of lots of DNA. It contain information which is required to express a particular trait in an organism. Absolutely understood. Gene is the fundamental unit of transmission of characters or inheritance. It has some information which when transcribed and translated results in production of proteins which produces that particular trait in an organism. Now allele is nothing but let's say this is TNT or TNT or TNT or whatever it is. So these are basically this is capital T and small t these are the two variants of a particular character and these are alleles which are same gene this is code this is coding for same character that is height so it is the same gene okay but there are different forms of that same gene they are coding for a pair of contrasting traits these are called as alleles please remember this for example color of flower so for example rw so these are the two alleles of same gene coding for color okay is that understood homo means same hetero means different so if there are same alleles in a pair then it is called as homozygous for example either capital T capital T or small t small t because both of them are same they are called as homozygous hetero means different hetero in biology means different so having two different alleles of a gene example capital T and small t so capital T is for tallness, small t is for shortness. Then we have mono means single hybrid cross. Okay, mono means single, di means two. It can be tri-hybrid, it can be tetra-hybrid, it can be penta-hybrid, as many as you want it. And if you run out of counting, it's always better to use polyhybrid. So if there is only one character in study and the crossing, I'll tell you what is crossing. So if only one character studies, for example, you only want to study height. You don't need to know about color. Or anything at all or smoothness or roughness or whatever then it is called as mono hybrid cross however if you want to know height also you want to know how color is also transmitted then it is called as dye hybrid because you are focusing on two particular characters let's say you want to focus on height also color also and smoothness also then this is a tri hybrid cross let's say apart from height color and smoothness you want to know whether the flowers are axial or flower are terminal then this become a tetra hybrid cross so this is also called as polyhybrid cross. If there are more than two characters, this is a polyhybrid cross. Now finally for today is dominant means a phenotypic expression which can express itself. Phenotype means related to body. So for example, I'll give you very very simple examples. Let's say this. This is one allele pair. This is one allele pair. This is one allele pair. This will 100% lead to tallness. This will 100% lead to dwarfness both of them are homozygous so they can express themselves in homozygous state what is this so let's say this is a two feet tall plant this is one feet tall plant so this if there is not dominance then should be 1.5 feet but it is exactly two feet tall plant because it is t is dominating over the small t is that understood so it can express itself even in heterozygous state that is why it is dominant for example let's say there is a plant which is two feet tall okay so can you say whether it is homozygous or heterozygous answer is no you cannot say it is homozygous or heterozygous it can be tt also both capital t homozygous or it can be tt heterozygous also but let's say if a plant is one feet tall can you say it is homozygous or heterozygous answer is yes because it can only be small t small t coming together it is absolutely clear now that dwarfness can express itself only when it is homozygous that is why it is recessive while dominating can express itself either it is homozygous or heterozygous so phenotypic expression which can express itself in homozygous as well as heterozygous combination by suppressing or by dominating the other of another trait okay but suppressing other or by dominating over the other this is called as dominant allele or dominant trait so this is designated obviously by capital letter while recessive means that phenotypic expression which can express itself only again i repeat the term only in homozygous combination it is designated by a small letter so i hope it is absolutely clear to you now so just hit the thumbs up and please spread the word as much as you can be a part of this education revolution and thank you for watching the tutorial have an awesome day